Today, let's talk about how to cite your sources in your paragraph in MLA format. People call it parenthetical or in-text citations, and I'm gonna show you how to correctly cite any type of source to avoid plagiarism. Let's get started. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to correctly cite any source, whether it's a book, website, article, if you know the author or don't, or has more than one author. But let me first explain the purpose of citing your sources, which trust me, will really help. It's called an in-text citation because it's a citation in your text, your paragraph. It's also called a parenthetical citation because you use parentheses. Parenthetical, parentheses. Parenthetical, parentheses. You get the idea. When writing, it's helpful to use other people's words and ideas to support your own or prove your point. When you do, you have to give credit to the person or organization that it came from. Even if you take their idea and put it in your own words, you still need to cite it. Imagine I stole your car, painted it, and put new tires on. It doesn't make it my car. It's still yours. It's the same with writing. The core idea is still theirs, even if it's in your own words. Now, if you do take a quote, put it in your own words, you still need to cite it, but you do not put quotes around it. If you take a quote and put it directly in your writing, you need to cite it and put quotes around it. Now, when you cite your source, try to give as much detail as possible. The author's name, the page number, title, but sometimes you don't have all that. The point of your in-text citation is to connect to your work cited. That way, if the reader wants to check out the original source, they can match the in-text citation to the work cited. Now, it's important to know that most information from this video came from this source, the Purdue Online Writing Lab and the MLA in-text citation, the basics section. To see my full citation, check out the video description. Now, you can either just keep watching this video to the very end, or if you're looking to cite a very specific source, check out the video description for the timestamp so you can jump directly to that point in the video. But then make sure to come back to the end of the video because I'll give you some crucial information. Now, if you found anything of value so far in the video, smash the like button, hit subscribe, and let's jump into it. Now, if you know the author for an imprint source, here's three ways to cite it in MLA format. First, for a direct quote, you can start off by saying the author's name and then have the quote and end it with the page number in parentheses. The second option is still for a direct quote. Notice in this situation, I have the author's name at the very end in the parentheses with the page number, but I still take some time to introduce the quote. For the third option, I took the quote and put it in my own words. I still say the author's name and at the very end, I have the page number and the parenthetical citation. Let's say the article doesn't have an individual author, but just comes from an organization. Here's how you cite it. I end the quote with a parenthetical citation. In the parentheses is the name of the organization. Notice I don't have the author's name or page number because it doesn't provide that information. Here's what you do when you don't know the author's name. If it's a short work like an article, in the parentheses you put the title and quotes. If it's long like a book, play, website, or TV show, in the parentheses you put the title in italics. Note that if the title is really long, you can shorten it for your citation. Here's what you do when you're citing a classic work with multiple editions. After the quote, in the parentheses, you have the page number, semicolon, followed by the edition. Whether it's a chapter, volume, book, part, section, or paragraph, use one of these abbreviations in your citation. Let's say you're citing two different authors with the same last name. Here's what you do. After the quote, in the parentheses, have the first initial, followed by the last name and the page number. Here's what you do if the quote comes from two authors. First, you can either have both their last names followed by the quote and page number, or just put both last names in the parentheses. Here's what you do if there's more than two authors. First option, cite the last name of the first author listed, followed by et, period, all, period, the quote, and then the page number. Or in the parentheses, put the last name, followed by et, period, all, period, and the page number. Let's say you're citing two different sources by the same author. First, make sure somewhere in the quote you have the author's name. Next, if it's a short work like an article, in the parentheses, you can have the shortened title in quotes followed by the page number. If it's a longer work like a book, website, TV show, or play, have the shortened title in italics followed by the page number in the parentheses. Here's what you do if you're citing a multi-work volume. After the quote in parentheses, have the volume number, colon, followed by the page numbers. Here's what you do if you're citing the Bible or another religious text. After the quote in the parentheses, have the version, comma, book, chapter, period, and then the verses. Check on my example below. Notice I abbreviate the book name. Further in your writing, if you're citing another passage from the Bible, you do not need to have the version in the parenthetical citation. Sometimes you're citing a source within a source. Here's what I mean. Let's say you're reading a book, and in that book, that author uses a quote from a different book. 
If you want to use that quote in your writing, it's best to find that book or article and cite that quote directly. But if that's not possible, here's what you do. Start off by citing the last name of the author of the actual quote. In the parentheses, you have QTD period in and the last name of the author of the book you're actually reading and the page number. But like I said, it's best to put that book down and find the original source and cite that. More than likely, most of you guys are citing online sources. If that's the case in the parentheses, you put whatever comes first and the work cited. So let's say when you look at your work cited, you see the article name comes first, then put the article name in the parentheses. But note that when you cite your source, you want to include as much information as possible. So try introducing it with the name of the website that it came from. Put the shortened name of the website, not the whole link. Let's say you're citing an online magazine. I have the quote and then in parentheses I have the last name of the author. But when you're citing an actual website, you're not going to use a parenthetical citation. Notice there's no parentheses here. Notice I have the website name in italics because it's a longer work. But then I have the article name, a shorter work, in quotes. When citing a film or movie, have the director's name follow the title of the movie in italics. If you're citing a lecture, make sure to say the name of the person presenting and that should connect to your work cited. Let's say you're citing an idea that comes from multiple authors. In the parentheses, I have the author's name, page number followed by a semicolon, and the second author's name and the page number. Here's what you do if you're citing a video like YouTube. State the author's name followed by the title in quotes. In the parentheses, have the timestamp where the quote comes from. Here's what you do for a short quote, which is four lines or less. If you're citing a quote, which is four lines or less, this is what it should look like. A long quote is defined as five lines or more. After you introduce the source, indent the quote like this example. If you're gonna add words to a quote, do it like this in brackets. Let's say you're using a quote, but you only need the first and last part of it. You can take out the middle and add three dots. Wow, that was a lot of information. Now let's review, revise, and edit our citation in MLA format. Do you include all the important details, the author's name, page number, or title? Check to see if your source needs to be in italics, underlined, or in quotes. Can you paraphrase it or put in your own words to make it shorter? Don't just cite the evidence and move on. Take the time to explain the source and why we should trust the author. To see how to do that, check out the video above. Lastly, make sure your citation matches your work cited. Again, I have tons of resources and information in the video description to help you. Again, thanks to the Purdue Writing Lab for the information included in my video. Make sure to like the video, hit subscribe, adios.